Okay, welcome to chapter 5 on energy. Energy. Okay? And specifically what we're going to focus on in this chapter are two uh, types of energy. The one is kinetic and the other is internal. And we are going to eventually get to the this concept of the conservation of energy. Okay, we've already seen the conservation of momentum. But now we will also see another um, fundamental principle called the conservation of energy. Okay, so this has to do with kinetic energy and internal energy. We will see that a bit later. Now it's very important for us to eventually get there. It's very important for us to study different types of collisions. Okay? So you're saying, okay, what do you mean by that? Um, in, in chapter 4, we saw, we saw collisions again and again. But what do you mean different types of collisions? Okay. So in chapter 4, I just went and cut out a couple of... Um, of these velocity time diagrams okay these are just four point figure 4.8 4.10 it doesn't really matter I just cut out a couple and what you notice is doesn't matter what the different inertias are if they're both the same right if the if they're different uh, materials for this one for example this one's metal this one's plastic cart this one is standard that one's a half so they had different inertias, okay? They could be the same, they could be different. What you noticed in most of the diagrams, perhaps you can find one where I'm wrong, but most of them, perhaps all of them, if you looked at the relative velocities before collision and after collision, remember the relative velocity is just, um, we'll get to that in a minute, but this velocity minus this velocity, Right, velocity 2 minus velocity 1, or velocity 1 minus velocity 2. If you looked at the relative velocities, even here, look at this relative velocity and that relative velocity after the, inter, uh, after the collision, you'll see that the relative velocities did not change. And so what our assumption was in chapter 4 is that the relative velocities before and after collision did not change, not change. Okay? And so this type of interaction or collision is known as an elastic collision. Meaning the relative velocities after were exactly the same as the relative velocities before. So this is, in chapter 4, all our interactions, all our collisions were elastic collisions. Okay, so let's let's carry on with this. Let's let's uh, develop this idea. We will notice that the velocity difference in two carts, v2 minus v1, in most cases, right? This is in chapter four, had the same magnitude before and after the collision. So this was chapter four. But we will see that in real life, in real life, the v2 minus v1 after the collision is not the same as the v2 minus v1 before the collision right so there there is a change in relative velocity after the collision and it's different from the change in velocity not the change the difference okay so what is relative velocity it is given by this v1 2 what does this mean? It means 2 relative to 1. Velocity 2 relative to velocity 1. Okay? Now, why is this so important? If the relative speed before the collision is the same as the relative speed after the collision, we have something called an elastic collision. And we'll see later on that this means that our kinetic energy initial is equal to our final kinetic energy, meaning we have not lost any kinetic energy 
Okay? Then, so there's the, there's the one case. Then the second case, which is really a general case, is that if the relative speed after the collision is less, it's lower than before the collision, then this is called an inelastic collision. All right? Inelastic collision. So the idea there, conceptually, is that we've lost some of our kinetic energy. We've lost some of our kinetic energy. Our kinetic energy has lowered, but where did it go? And then the extreme case of inelastic collision is a totally inelastic collision. That's if the, um, the speed, the relative speed, sorry, after collision is zero, meaning two objects come at each other and then collide and then they, they start moving with the same speed. The relative speed is zero. Okay? So the point is that these, based on our relative speeds, we can, we can see what types of collisions we have. An elastic collision, an inelastic collision, or a totally inelastic collision. And these different types of interactions, collisions, tell us what kind of energy uh, we can look at. Um, what's, happening, what's happening to our kinetic energy? What's happening to something called internal energy? Okay? So we'll see you in the next video.